Good morning. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. I hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, my name is Whitney Nicely. If you're new to my uh, live feeds or YouTube channel or however you're watching this, just know that I love real estate, okay? But real estate is basically a pyramid scheme. And I think we should all be pretty familiar with what a pyramid scheme is, but it's basically, let's, uh, let's say, um, let me give you an example, okay? And I've got my little piece of paper here. A pyramid scheme is a pyramid, okay? And at the top is usually the CEO, okay? So like at Walmart, uh, the uh, Walton families are up at the top, okay? And then they have regional managers, and then they have store managers, and then they have minions. Okay, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so a pyramid scheme could be Mary Kay. Let's use Mary Kay, okay? And I know Mary Kay's not a pyramid scheme, technically, but let's just use it as an example. Mary Kay Ash is up here at the top, okay, right? She's the CEO. She owns the joint. Then she's got regional managers. She's got people under her and they manage a territory or maybe they're territory managers. Call them whatever you want to. And then there's local people in every city that kind of manage that city, right? And then there's all the little minion people out there selling Mary Kay, okay? Those are probably your girlfriend. She probably makes 100 bucks a month selling Mary Kay. Maybe she'll break 500 in a really good month or maybe she's awesome, but she's still in the minion category. Okay, and there could be more categories here, but basically this is a pyramid scheme. And what happens on the pyramid scheme is all these people down here on the bottom, part of their money flows up the pyramid, right? And then on the store level, that's why, you know, MLMs, mar multi-level marketing or whatever MLM stands for, you want to get to the top because if you sign somebody up, if you're on this level right here and you sign up enough people, then you don't really have to sell Mary Kay anymore. You just get to make some of the money from them. But then when you get to be the regional manager, you really don't have to sell this stuff anymore. You can if you want to. You're probably really good at it. But you get to make money off of these people, right? And then all of these people, all of this money, it flows up to the top. From all these levels, it flows to the top, right? Flows to the top. So all of the money goes upstream, okay? That's a pyramid scheme, basically. So how is real estate a pyramid scheme? Well, that's a great question, I'm glad you asked. Let's assume, well, let's look at real estate from two different sides. Okay, one side is a regular real estate agent, a broker, whatever you want to call it, a realtor, however that works out for you. Okay, and let's say that here's our pyramid, and uh, let's use a national firm. Let's use Keller Williams to start with. Okay, so Keller and Williams, y'all think they still list houses? No, they're at the top. Keller Williams, up at the top, right? And then they've got uh, regional people, regional brokers, <laughs> right? And then Abby, 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 we're on a video, leave the squirrel alone, okay? And then, uh, so these regional brokers, stop it. They report, or they have the local brokers, And then we have regular real estate agents down here on the bottom, okay? And if you're not in a national firm, that's fine. You can still work this pyramid. In fact, if you work in a local real estate firm, or even if you do work in a real big fancy real estate firm, there's probably even another layer down here. And these are for your assistants, your VAs, the office ladies, the front desk, the non-licensed people that are doing a lot of the work, they're down here on this bottom level, okay? So let, let me explain this pyramid. This is the real estate agent 
This is why you get a real estate license. Okay, this is this pyramid. And I know it's backwards on this screen, but y'all follow me. Okay, so on this one, we're using Keller Williams because Mr. Kellen, Keller and Mr. Williams, they aren't listing houses anymore, okay? They wrote, which one of them wrote the uh, Million Dollar Agent or the Million Dollar Listing or whatever that book was? What was it, 03, 04 when they wrote that? Yeah, they stopped listing houses back then, okay? And okay, fine, maybe they list some houses. They're not listing as many houses as these guys, okay? Okay, but anyway, let's say that you're in a Keller Williams. Mr. Keller and Mr. Williams, they make money because they have franchised, they have licensed all of these people underneath them to be able to use their name, okay? But let's, let's, let's count them out. Let's imagine they're not even in this scenario, okay? Let's say that you're in a Ma and Pa real estate firm. So let's make this, instead of a reach broker, let's make this a principal broker. Okay, and the principal broker on the top of the pyramid now, they own the real estate firm. Abby, quiet. Silly dog, she's messing up my video. Okay, so the principal broker owns the firm. They're the head boss. The principal broker, she's the man, he's, or he's the man, she's the woman in charge of your firm, okay? And they're at the top of the pyramid because they work their way up there. They serve their time. Look, you're gonna have to go. You're making too much noise. Sorry, okay. So the principal broker is up at the top of the pyramid now. And they've served their time, they paid their fees, they paid their licenses, they paid their dues, they've got all sorts of experience, and they own the real estate firm. So now they're at the top of the pyramid. Got me? Then, you might have some other brokers in the office. They're the local brokers. They're not the principal, but they have the education to be a real broker. They've got the license, they pay the extra fees, they do all the stuff to have a broker after their name. Great, awesome, wonderful. But what I really want you to notice here is that the principal broker's up at the top, the local broker, the managing broker, the broker that's in charge of everything, really, they're right here. And then this bigger level, that's for real estate agents. Okay, this third level right here, real estate agents. and. This layer is pretty thick, okay? See how much room we have over here? The bottom level, those are new agents, okay? The top of this level, those are agents that have been agents for 30 years. They just, for a multitude of reasons, they just didn't ever go get their broker's license to jump up a step. There's reasons they should, could, and maybe will, but they just haven't yet. Okay, so we're going to focus on this one for a second. These agents have all the listings. These agents hold all of the open houses. They bake cookies at the open houses so the house smells good. They hang all the bandit signs. They're the ones at the Chamber of Commerce meetings. They're the ones at the BNI meetings. They're the ones at every networking event that they can go to. Schmooza Palooza is full of these guys, okay? And in Knoxville, we actually call it Schmooza Palooza. Um, and there may be some local brokers. There may be some principal brokers there. But the majority of realtors fall into a regular real estate agent category. They're on this level of the pyramid. And what's so cool about this level? Well, if you're not an agent, you may not know this, but every time this agent has a closing, whether they're the buying agent or the listing agent, they have to pay this guy. Their money goes to this guy. And it may be a 90-10 split, so it may be a 90 to 10 split and this agent the one that's been busting their tail out there doing all the work they may get 90 percent or if they are in a big firm i don't know which big firm but maybe they have a 50 50 split i talked to a lady on the phone 
Wednesday of this week, and she has a 50-50 split with her broker. So every time she has a closing, let's say she makes $6,000 every time she has a closing, whether she's the listing agent or the buying agent, she makes $6,000. She's on this level. And every time she does that, she gives $3,000 up the chain of command because she has a 50-50 split. If she made $6,000 and she was in a firm that had a 90-10 split, then she would get to keep 90% of that. Would that be like 5,500 and she'd give 500 to her broker. There's other um, broker firms out there and when you come in as a regular agent, you can just pay them money up front. Money up front, money up front. And you don't have to split your commission with them anymore. You get 100% of your commission but you paid money to come in. You may pay $10,000 to come into this firm, but you never have to split your commissions again. So if you do one listing for a $100,000 house and you get to charge a 10% commission, then you get your money back. And then for the rest of your life, you have to do your continuing education to be a real estate agent, but you don't have to do any more and you don't have to split any more money with these guys, even though that the firm is under their name. Depending on how motivated you are, depending on how good you are, depending on how many deals you think you're going to do, how many closings you think you have, that would be a really good option. You know what I mean? But let's look at the last level. This is the assistants. This is the VAs. Um, this is the front desk. This is the office. This is the answering service. These are all the people that keep these other people in line okay some big firms have an answering service and you can't schedule a booking you can't schedule a showing until you talk to these people they are the gatekeeper but to be the gatekeeper guess how much money of these deals they get can you read that I wrote it upside down these people are probably paid a flat amount every month, no matter how many calls they take in, no matter how much they do, all of that, they know what they're going to get. No matter if these agents have closings, these agents have stress, these brokers have closings, these brokers have stress. The principal broker, you might be the principal broker, but your minion agents aren't doing enough work that you still have to go out and list houses. You still have to go out and do the hard stuff. You still have to be on your phone 24-7. You can't take a Friday off. And Saturdays and Sundays, I don't know if you've seen the little cartoons, the little memes, but Saturdays and Sundays don't really work in real estate because you are actually working on Saturdays and Sundays because the majority of the market wants to go see the houses on Saturdays and Sundays. That means if you're a real estate agent, you don't have a Saturday and Sunday. You literally work like seven days a week, 365 days, just so if you're a regular agent, just so that you can get paid, but you also have to keep working because your broker's putting pressure on you down the pyramid scheme to make sure that you're having closings so that the money keeps going up the pyramid. And I know your principal broker up here, they've got a lot more insurance than you do. They're paying for the building, they're paying for the firm license, they're paying for the extra insurance, and it's their, it's the principal broker's license that's also on the line. If the minions, the little, the regular real estate, the little worker bee, the worker ant agents, if they mess up, the principal broker can go to jail over it too. So paying your principal broker is good. I'm in. Whatever. Okay. But. I'm a control freak, and I told y'all this before, I'm a control freak. I was a regular agent. I did my listings. I did two listings. I did one. It closed. It was fine. I made like 1200 bucks on my first deal, my first listing deal. My second listing deal blew up in my face. It was a disaster, almost from go. I'll tell you about that on another day, though. It's a totally different story. And I paid my broker. Out of my one deal. I was a terrible minion agent because I only did one listing. 
I list I leased a lot of properties. I was a leasing agent. I did those, but I still made like a hundred bucks. I had a regular job because a lot of real estate have a nine to five because they can't afford to just be a real estate agent. Usually brokers are full time in real estate. And again, you could be a new agent and be on the bottom of this level, or you could be a older, more experienced agent. You could be an agent, a regular realtor, a listing agent, a buying agent, and have more experience than your broker. But they've got the license. They went to the class. They did the work. Okay. But I hope this explains how being a regular real estate agent is just a gigantic pyramid scheme. But now I know this is a disaster and you don't understand any of this now, but it's a pyramid scheme. The money flows up, the work comes down. Money goes up, work comes down, right? You get it? Pyramid scheme. The people at the top, they're making money off of everybody that's working below them. But you don't need a real estate license to be a real estate agent, do you? No, trick question. We do this one all the time. Okay, so if you want to be a real estate investor and you want to make some real money, there's a pyramid scheme for that too. Okay, watch this. There's our pyramid, right? And at the top, we're going to make this for the banks. Okay? Because when you think about real estate, you think that you need to go to the bank or you need $100,000 cash in your pocket. But just for this example, we're going to make the banks the top of the pyramid because I don't know what the statistic is, but probably like 75% uh, of Americans living in their primary house, they go to the bank, they get a loan, the bank gives them the money to buy their house, okay? And as investors, we know that there's, well, like eight different ways that you can buy a house without going to the bank, but for regular, everyday Americans, they're gonna go to the bank, all right? So we're gonna make the bank the top of the pyramid. And then you have landlords. Let, let's not just call these people on um, this level. Let's call them big landlords, okay? Because you can be a landlord. You can have one property and you can be a landlord. You can have a half acre piece of industrial land in the east side of the county and rent it for $250 a month and be a landlord. But big landlords, they have big properties. They have big tax bills. They probably have big tax filings, okay? Big landlords have 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 properties in their portfolio, okay? Big landlords have a maintenance crew on staff. Big landlords own apartment buildings. They own shopping centers. They own... Uh, truck yards, they own gas stations. Big landlords are the big guys. Okay? Big landlords, like Grant Cardone, he's a big landlord. Like $250 million of real estate. I call that big. Okay? But the next line on our pyramid, these are going to be the little landlords. Okay? These are going to be the people on the little landlord line. They've got a house. They've got two houses. Maybe they sold their primary house, moved up, and kept their original house as a rental. Um, maybe they inherited their parents' five rental houses. They're just kind of piddling in it. They're just kind of dabbling in it. They're kind of playing real estate. They're not really out to make a whole bunch of money. Like, they make some money and it's good and and it's fine, but they're not killing it, all right? They're not bringing in ten, fifteen, hundred thousand dollars a month. They're bringing in two thousand, maybe five thousand a month. But you know, they just kind of they kind of piddle in it. If something breaks, they usually go out and fix it. They're just little landlords, okay? They own some properties, no big deal. And then the bottom of the pyramid, these are renters. Or tenants. 
Okay? So, in the pyramid scheme, this is for the investor side, you either have the banks, and you're probably not a bank, are you? You have the big landlords, people that are bringing in shit tons of money every month in real estate. You have the little landlords, the people that are dabbling in it. Maybe they just got started. Maybe they're building their net worth. Maybe they're doing, you know, whatever it takes. And then you have renters and tenants. And that's all you have on this pyramid. You're either a bank, a landlord, or a tenant. So my question right now is, what are you? Are you a bank? Probably not. Are you a big landlord? Probably not. Are you a little landlord? And there's a good chance that you are a little landlord. I mean, I've got 50 something properties, but I would still consider myself a little landlord. Well, I don't know. When you say I've got 50 something properties, maybe I am a big landlord. Whatever. Or are you a renter? Renters don't pay the bank directly, okay? They don't own the house. Their name isn't on the title. Renters, tenants, these people are just squatters. They're just hanging out. And I know this because I am one. You weren't ready for that, were you? Okay, on this pyramid, let me show you where I fit in. My brother and I, my husband and I, and then I, by my little self, I, we have tenor, ten, <laughs> tenors, we have renters and we have tenants. And just like on the other pyramid scheme, they pay us, okay? So this money from the renters and the tenants, it comes up a, a level to the little landlord. I'm gonna be a little landlord in this case, okay? I'm a little landlord, but I live, I don't own, believe this or not, I don't own the house that I live in. I don't. I am a renter. I own 17 houses. I'm a little landlord. I own 19 apartment units. I'm a little landlord, but I still rent the house that I live in. Okay? So I am a renter who is also a little landlord. And do you know why I'm a renter who is also a little landlord? Because my mom is a big landlord. All right, my mom is the bomb. In case you, this is your first video you've ever watched, my mom is a freaking, I mean, she's just amazing. The reason I'm a rock star is because she trained me to be a rock star, okay? My mom is awesome. So I'm a little landlord. I've got 17 houses. 19 apartment units and like six or seven chunks of land and my tenants pay me Okay, all this money from this level comes up to my little level All right We'll call this I've got 50 properties and all that money comes up to me right here. Okay This is me My mom She's got a lot of properties too but she's got about seven rental houses, okay? So out of the seven rental houses that my mama has, on this level, my brother and I are two of her seven tenants. So when my brother and I make our rent payment, we get, we get payments from the renters and the tenants, right? They pay us. And since my brother and I are renters and tenants, we're squatting in mama's house, we pay mom. So the little landlords, a lot of people are little landlords, but still they rent a spot in a shopping center. They lease a spot to hang their sign. So they're still tenants. Their money still flows up to the bigger landlords. Okay? So every month, my renters, my tenants pay me on this level, their money comes up. I use that money to pay my mom. All right? My mom turns around and pays the banks.
Now, my mom's properties are all free and clear. All of her renters, all of her tenants, when they pay her every month and the money comes upstream to my mom's level, she uses all this money to pay the banks off on her primary house. So when my mama, when I collect the rent and then I pass it off to mom, she passes it off to the banks who are at the top of the pyramid, all right, to pay off her primary house. Or if she wanted to go borrow some money and buy an investment property, she would just use all this money and pay off this one note so that when she pays off the bank, after a couple of years, because, you know, my mom, she's got a job, but she doesn't have to use her nine to five money to pay her mortgage, to pay her bill, because she's getting all this money from below her on the pyramid that flows up to her as the big landlord, and then she pays off the banks. So what happens when she gets her primary house paid off? What happens when she gets all of her investment properties paid off? That's right. Now my mom is the top of the pyramid. Does that make sense? If you can start with the banks at the top, you become a big landlord, or you become a little landlord, or you stay as a renter, then you can eventually pay the bank off and boom, you're up at the top. Now, as the big landlord, you've got all of your properties below you paid off. They're all bringing you money every month. Suddenly, you have a side pot of money and you become the bank. So you get rid of... First Tennessee, you get rid of the credit union, you get rid of Chase, you get rid of Wells Fargo, you get rid of all these big banks, and you, the big bad landlord, you become the bank. You become a private money lender. You become somebody that people know in the community that buys real estate. You do real estate deals. You are the top of the pyramid now. And this pyramid, there's always going to be renters and there's always going to be tenants and if you're the big landlord and you're sitting up here with not just 50 properties like I have but you're sitting up here with 500 properties that means 500 people if you got 500 doors you got apartments you got houses you got commercial units you got whatever you got 500 people if you got 500 doors 500 units let's say they're all paying you $500 a month can somebody do some math for me real quick? What is 500 units times $500 a month? Is that 25,000? Five times five is 25. And there's four zeros. Is that 250 or 25,000? I went to pal, I don't do math. But 500 people are paying you $500 a month. I guarantee that's more than what you're making right now. I guarantee if you started with one property, one property as a little landlord, and then you grew it to 50, like I did in the last three years, and then you grew that 50, up to a hundred in three more years. Then in three years you got 250 and they're all starting to get paid off. They're all starting to get free and clear and you're paying off all your debts so that the big banks, they're not calling you. They're not hassling you. You don't care about them. You don't care where the interest rate is. You don't care what's going on in the economy. You just get more and more people to come into your circle and pay you the money up at the top. So, I don't know if you know this or not, but real estate is a pyramid scheme. That's what it is. And I don't know if you're on this pyramid where, you know, your principal broker's up at the top and you're a real estate agent and you have to split your commissions with your real estate agent. I don't know if that's the pyramid you're on or not. But I do know that the investor pyramid is where the money is. Even if you are the principal broker over here.
Even if you are making money off of all your minion agents and that money is coming up, you're still not making as much money as if you owned a bunch of houses. If you're the investor, you can become top dog. You can become the banks. You will have principal brokers working for you, bringing you deals, bringing you leads, bringing you whatever, and they're going to be making pennies. I promise pennies compared to the dollars you're going to bring in every single month. So now tell me. I just showed you how you can have, you can build up from one unit to 50 to 100 to 250, then to 500. And let's just say at the basic minimum, and you can do this in about 10 years. And you don't have to have any money to buy this first property. You don't have to have any credit to buy this first property. And let's say at a minimum, you bought all little crappy crack houses. Let's say you have 500 of them, or you got little bitty apartment units and you rent them for $500 a month. You have 500 units, you rent them for $500 a month. How much money do you make every month? after 10 years. Because I know, sure as I'm sitting here, it's more than you're making right now. And you don't have to have any money to go from being a renter to a little landlord. And when you get to the little landlord and I tell you how you can buy a bunch of houses, you can buy 50 houses with no money, no credit, no nothing in a year or two, Suddenly you have some money. Suddenly you're making some money. Suddenly your net worth looks better. Suddenly everything starts looking better for you, okay? And then you all of a sudden become a big landlord. And then all of a sudden you're getting loans. You're buying big properties. But then you pay off the bank. And then you become the bank. And then you start making crazy amounts of money. So the next time you tell me that you don't have any money to start investing, you don't have any time to start investing, I wish you would just tell me that a lot sooner because I'm on my way to being a big landlord, to having 500 units, paying me at least $500 a month. I am almost four years into my 10 years and I got a lot of work to do. So if you're not serious about real estate and you're not serious about getting this done and you're not serious about getting out of the, this pyramid or you're not serious about getting out of this pyramid, then don't call me. Don't waste my time. Don't join my program. Don't learn everything I have to tell you because I like talking to serious people who are ready to take some action. Now, if you've listened to all this and you're confused, send me a message. I'll explain it again or watch it again. Maybe it'll make sense the next time. Everybody fits into one of these four categories. Everybody fits into one of these four categories. You might fit into two or three. I don't know. At the top, we have the banks. They control all the money supposedly. Then we have big landlords. We have little landlords and we have renters. Which one are you? How much money do you make? How much money do you make by clocking into your job? How much money do you make on every list you get? How much money do you make on every lease agreement that you get? How much money do you make every month? And how much does it take for you to live the life of your dreams? If you want to know more, if you do want to talk to me, if you are ready to get started buying houses with no money down, no credit, no banks, no nothing, just you and people and you want straight, short, to the point answers. I don't fluff. I want you to be a real estate investor. I want every woman in America 
to be a bank. You can be a big bank, you can be a little bank, I don't care. I want you to be a landlord. I want you to be a little landlord. I want you to be a big landlord. I don't want you to be a renter anymore. I don't want you to waste your money. I want you to be building your net worth, build your portfolio, build everything that you've ever wanted to have is totally available. And if you've been fiddle farting around for the last 10, 15, or 20 years as a real estate agent, or as a mortgage broker, or as an inspector, or as a secretary, or whatever you've been doing, wasting your time, I can catch you up. If you're looking at retirement in the next 10 or 15 years, I can catch you up. If you're looking at retiring when you're 45 and you're 40, Oh crap, I've only got five more years. I can catch you up. I can do it. I know how to go from no properties to 50 in three years. And I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do it. You can fill out the application all about REI.com. If you've already had the conversation, if you've already filled out the application and we've already talked on the phone, I don't know what you're waiting on. Because you told me on the phone you weren't making enough money. You told me on the phone you didn't like your job. You told me on the phone that you didn't like your living situation. You told me on the phone that you wanted to take your family on a vacation. You told me on the phone that you've got big hopes and dreams and you're really motivated and you're really determined except you really don't want to put out the money to get the education that you need. Is that what you told your college professor? When you decided to go get your real estate license and you paid out $2,500 to go to school, get the books, pay the exams, get the fees, blah, 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 blah. What did you get? You got a license. You had to work to get your money back. How many deals did it take? How long did it take? Because the way I teach, in two weeks, you should be sitting down at seller's kitchen tables having conversations, making offers on properties. In two weeks. And I know when you go get your real estate license, you have to go to class, you have to sign up for the test, you have to uh, send the stuff off to the state. It could take six months before you even start to see that investment come back. I'm talking about two weeks or less. So how serious are you? How motivated are you? How determined are you? Fill out the application, allaboutrei.com. Uh, you can hit on the cash flow system tab if you want to know more about it, but we need to talk. We need to get you into being a landlord. We need to get you into that life that you want. And that's my piece. Real estate is a pyramid scheme. And if you don't believe me, look for yourself. Tell me I'm wrong. I hope you all have a great day. Happy investing. You can also check me out, WhitneyNicely.com. I've got a YouTube channel. I do a lot more real estate, a lot less griping usually, but I'm really tired of women telling me that they're motivated and then I see them not doing anything to change their, change their situation. And I'm tired of it. The ladies in my program send me messages every day, every other day. Oh my gosh, I love that video. Oh my gosh, I did not think like that. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you explained that to me. And you, you, the woman who filled out the application, had the 30 minute call with me, told me all this stuff, cried with me on the phone. You're fine staying where you are apparently. Because if you really wanted to change, you'd buy the program, you'd get in. Because otherwise, you're gonna be waiting on $50,000 or $100,000 to fall in your lap so you can start flipping properties. But then you're going to be flipping it with no formula, with no guidance, with no mentor, with nobody to talk to about the program or this, uh, not even the, pro not my program, but the program, the system that you put out there. What if you waste a bunch of money? What if you lose a bunch of money? You got nobody to bounce it off of. So check it out. All about REI.com. Fill out the application, book a call with me and let me know when you're ready to get started because I have everything in place to get you started today. Today. So, y'all have a great day. I'm going to go kill it. I'm gonna go, maybe I'll buy some more houses today. I made $40,000 on Monday before lunch. I made $40,000 on Monday of this week, today is Friday, before lunch. 
How much did you make this week? How much did you make this month? What do you have lined up for next month? Because I plan on doing it again next month. I'll do it again next week. Well, not next week because the kids are on a break from school next week and I'm going to go play because I can. Do you play with your kids on fall break, on spring break, on summer break? Or do you work and try to fit in a little bit of family time here or there? It's your choice. Allaboutrei.com. Bye, y'all.